Hello guys, Transcended here. In this video, we're going to go over the nature of roots. Okay, so we're going to talk about determining the nature of the roots of um, a quadratic function. So we know that a quadratic function is a function that is in this form, x squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so the nature of the roots, uh, what we mean is, uh, it actually depends on the x values of a quadratic function, points at which a curve cuts the, the x-axis. So you find that there are caves like this. Some caves are above the x-axis, some are below the x-axis. Others cut it at, um, at one point only. So what we need to realize is uh, these are what is um, determining the nature of the roots. So there are some cases where we say there are no real roots, like in this case where it's above and below the x-axis, meaning that there are no values of x at which it cuts the x-axis. Then there are cases where we've got two different points where it cuts, so those are real roots and they're also distinct. So basically, we don't have to sketch for us to determine the nature of the roots, but we just have to work with the discriminant. The discriminant helps us to determine the nature of the roots. So what basically is a discriminant? So remember when you look at the equation, that helps us to find the the x values of the roots of a, a quadratic equation. We say that our x is actually equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So basically these other things that you're able to see like the negative b, the 2a, so those basically we just read to numbers that cannot change form. But basically when you look at what's below the square root there, it can be a root of a negative number, for example. It can also be a root of a positive number. It can also be a root, a root of zero. So you find that this gets to affect what? The nature of the roots, because there's a plus or minus there. So basically, in a normal case, we're supposed to have two different solutions after subtracting or adding the value that we get in the square root. Uh, Okay, so let's try to understand. So what is below the square root there is what we call the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. So the discriminant is the one that determines the nature of the roots. So if we say what is below the square root there is maybe, so b squared minus 4ac, if it's greater than zero, it has got a meaning. It can also be equivalent to zero then our b squared minus 4ac can also be less than zero. So basically these will summarize the nature of the roots. Of course we can talk about rational and other things, but for now these will summarize the nature of the roots. So when the discriminant is greater than zero, it means that what is below the square root there is above zero. So that basically is predictable. If you get your calculator, you'll be able to determine the value. So we can therefore say that whenever you have the discriminant being greater than zero, the nature of the roots is what? Is real. Okay? So it's real. And it being greater than zero, we can also say we're going to have two different solutions. So we can also say we have real distinct points. There are two distinct points. Then for the next one, b squared minus 4 is, is equivalent to a zero. Meaning that whether we say, remember the equation that we have is negative b, plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we are saying what we have here is giving us two different solutions after adding and subtracting. That's why we are saying distinct points. But in the next case where it's a zero, whether you add or subtract, nothing will change. So you're only going to have one solution. So we say we have two different solutions as an assumption and we say they are equal roots in such a case equal because whether you had subtract you have the same solution so there are also real roots because it's actually a real root because it's going to cut the x-axis then the other one b squared minus 4ac should be less than zero so whenever it is less than zero it means that you have a negative value for example the root of negative two so that's a complex number and you can't find the value so we say that such an equation has got none real roots then uh, <coughs> so there are no real roots of such an equation
So basically, that's what the nature of uh, Lutz uh, talks about. Now, let's try to look at some of the practice solutions that will help us get to understand what we are talking about more. So determine the nature of roots of each of the following equations. So I'll start with the first one. Okay, so I'll cut something there. So it was just supposed to be a squared, but it is repeating. So for the first question, what we have is 7x squared minus 9x plus 2 is equal to 0. So basically what we are saying is the discriminant is what is determining the nature of the root. So the value of a discriminant. So let's try to determine the, the discriminant in this case. So our b is the coefficient of x. Our a is the coefficient of uh, x squared. And our c is the constant there. So our b squared is going to be negative 9 squared minus. Our a is 7. Our c is 2. So 9 squared is 81 minus 4 by 7 is 28. 28 by 2 is 56. So 81 by 56. Of course, we may not be able to predict the value now, but we can say 81 minus 56. What we have is um, 6 from 11. You have 5. You have 2. So 25. So basically, 25 what is it? Is it greater than or less than 0? So 25 is basically greater than 0. So in this case, our discriminant, or let me just put it there, is greater than 0. So what conclusion can we make? So we say in such a case, we make a conclusion to say that the nature of the roots 1, they are real. So now, whenever it's greater than 0, you are going to find two different points at which it cuts the x-axis. So we also say, they are real and distinct. So then the root of, um, so remember it's uh, the discriminant is going to be under a square root. So the root of 25, is it a perfect square or non-perfect square? So it's going to be a perfect square, which will give you a 5. So you can also say that the, the, the roots are also what? Rational, because you're able to express them in the form of uh, a fraction. So whenever you have an imperfect square, they are irrational because roots of imperfect squares like the square root of 2 are irrational numbers but you can't express in the form of a fraction. Let's try to move on and look at the second one. So the second one says 6x squared so 6x squared minus 13x plus 4 is equal to 0. So feel free to pause the video and try it out from what you said. So basically the discriminant again will determine the nature of the roots there. Okay, so what is our b? Our b is uh, negative 13, so it's squared. Then uh, our a is uh, 6, our c is 4. So 13 squared, 13 by 13, we have uh, 169. Then if you say 4 times 4, or 4 by 6 first of all, 4 by 6, multiply by 4, we have um, 96. So 169 minus 96, basically we have 73 as our value. So basically, even in this case, it's greater than a 0. So the nature of the roots, real roots, they are distinct and they are also at irrational because the square root of 73 is not a perfect square. It's obviously going to be a decimal number, so irrational. <laughs> then the third one says 25. So we are there. So we're saying we have 25 x squared minus 10x plus 1 is equal to 0. So our b squared in such a case, what do we have as our b? We have negative 10. So basically, negative 10 squared minus 4. Our a is 25 and our c is 1. So 10 squared is 100. 4 by 25. So 2 by 25 is 50. By 4 is going to be 100. 
so what you have is a zero there so in short it is equal to zero so whenever it is equal to zero we said of the roots are they are real they are equal they are not distinct they are equal because you only have one value then we can also say looking at the oh, of course these are enough because if you say irrational of course zero is a rational number but it's fine to just say the real and equal roots for such a question all right then the last one under this question what do we have so we have so it's supposed to be x squared plus 2 the root of 3x minus 9 so remember we're looking at our b squared minus 4ac so in this case what do we have our b squared we're going to have that squared our a is 1 our c is negative 9 so what basically is uh, 2 to the third root 2 to two, 2 root third root then squared so 2 times 2 we have a 4 the root of 3 multiplied by root of 3 is going to be a 3 because remember from the sides we know that that is equal to 2 so if you put a 3 equally that same applies so you have 4 by 9 is 36 so it's negative multiplied by negative basically we end up having um, a positive value so plus 36 so 4 by 3 is 12 plus 36 so 1 plus 3 is 4 2 plus 6 is 8 so we have 48 so is 48 greater than or equal to 0 <coughs> so it turns out it's going to be greater than okay so it being greater than 0 tells us that the roots are distinct they are real and they're also going to be rational because the root of 48 is not a perfect square the next question says find the value of p if the following quadratic equation has equal roots so the equation that we have is for x squared minus p minus 2 x plus 1 so we are trying to find the value of p if the following got as equal roots so we are saying for the equal roots um, the, the discriminant is equivalent to what is equivalent to a 0 so let's try to find the value of p for which that is true so our b squared in this case is um, <coughs> basically what's in the brackets there of course it comes with it's coming with a negative so we have um, can just say p minus 2 squared why have I ignored the negative because if you put it in the bracket squared it will become a positive then our a is 4 our c is 1 this should be equal to 0 so p minus 2 in the brackets if you expand that you're going to have p squared minus 4p plus 4 then this part we have 4 by 4 that is going to be 16 equal to zero so uh, our value our goal is to find the value of um, the value of p so from that stage what can we do we have p squared minus 4p then 4 minus 16 is going to be what it's going to be minus 12 which is equal to zero so uh, our piece is factorizable the product is negative 12 the sum is negative 4 so what numbers can you multiply to give you 12 then you add them they give you negative 4 so we can look at 6 and a 2 so basically negative 6 and 2 so we have p squared minus 6p plus 2p minus 12 so the factors we replace there the sum so from there we can factorize what we have is we have p minus 6 there we have 2 then we have p minus 6 so basically what we have is p plus 2 p minus 6 so the possible values that we can have for the, uh, that equation for the discriminant to be equivalent to a 0 is the first value is um, let me create some space here huh? 
so our p equal to negative 2 and our p be equal to 6 so these are the two solutions to that question the next one for what values of k will each of the following equations give equal roots okay so we're looking at equal roots again the same concept is going to apply so we have 3x squared plus kx plus 2 being equal to 0 so we're saying for the roots to be equal to be equal roots we're supposed to be the, the discriminant is supposed to be equivalent to a 0 so our b in this case is k so it's k squared then minus 4 our a is 3 our c is 2 so we have k squared then 4 by 3 is 12 by 2 that is 24 so it's minus 24 equal to 0 so our k is actually going to be equal to plus or minus the root of what? 24 so <laughs> that's uh, the value for k in the first case then how about the second case So k x squared minus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. So we look at the, uh, the discriminant. So our b in this case is negative 4. So we have negative 4 squared. So our b discriminant is what? So we have b squared which is negative 4. Our a is k. Then our c is 1. This is supposed to be equivalent to a 0. This is a 16 minus 4k <laughs> so we have negative 4k being equal to negative 16 and our value of k is therefore going to be a 4 so that's the way to go about it then the last question find k for which the equation 4x squared so let's copy that equation so our equation is 4x squared plus kx plus 9 is equivalent to 0. So we'll be satisfied satisfied by only one real value of x. So we said whenever there is one real value, we meant to say it's actually real roots. How is it real roots? It's because it's b squared minus 4ac being equivalent to a 0. And if you go back to the equation that we use when we are finding the roots, you have what determines whether you're going to have different values you look at that so now if you have a zero here it means that what you're going to have is only a single solution because whether you had or you subtract a zero it will still be the same so that's one way in which i can ask you a question so sometimes they can also ask you to say find the value of maybe a k where the roots are where the nature of the roots is are real they are not real so you look at the discriminant that's the way we looked at the different nature of roots. That's the way you're supposed to set it up as you get to find the values of uh, unknown constants. So our b squared in such a case is going to be k squared. Our a is 4. So we have 4 multiplied by our a which is a 4. Then our c is 9. c is equal to 0. So we have k squared. Then we have 4 by 4 there. Which is a 16. Then our 16 multiplied by 9. 16 multiplied by 9 is going to be 144. So minus 144 is equal to a 0. So if we proceed, we know that our k squared is going to be 144. Then our possible values is going to be plus or minus the root of 144, which is a 12. So those are the two values of uh, the k that can satisfy that equation if you want to have only one root. Okay. And that marks the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure feel free to comment. Give us a comment. Give us a like. Share. And also give suggestions on the topics that you want us to cover. Thank you very much.